America bees. It's how the world sees the Japanese. But in fact, from New Year's Day to the Emperor's birthday in December, Japan has 15 public holidays, the most in the industrialized world. Yet it's also true that Japanese workers rarely take their allotted paid holidays. Before the late 19th century, Japan had no extended holidays at all, other than once-in-a-lifetime pilgrimages to Issei Jingu, a prominent Shinto shrine. If the Japanese would take lots of time off, they would increase consumption and the economy would pick up. At least that's the idea behind various recent government and corporate efforts encouraging people to take more holidays. On this edition of Begin Japanology, Holidays. By looking at attitudes towards holidays, we'll examine various aspects of the Japanese way of life. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakat. There's a widespread perception that Japanese people are workaholics, and it's probably not too far from the truth. In most countries in my line of work, you'd be able to take a month off work and either somebody would fill in for you, or the program would take a break and show reruns. In fact, Begin Japanology does something pretty close to that. But all of the other radio and television programs I'm involved with run year in, year out, so even taking a single week off work can be a major logistical headache. Having said that, Japanese people over the course of a year do take time off work, but they just do it in a rather different way. Let's take a look. Japanese holidays fall into two broad categories, those for ceremonial occasions and those for leisure. The most important ceremonial holiday is at the New Year. For about a week around the turn of the year, most companies are closed, and many people return to their ancestral hometowns. Family members who rarely see each other gather to eat traditional New Year's dishes. People relax with their family and pray for happiness and health in the year to come. Around August is the Orbon season, a time to think about and commemorate departed family members. It's believed that spirits return from the afterlife at this time of year. People typically visit the graves of their ancestors. During this time, Bonodori dances are held all around Japan for the sake of these visiting ancestral spirits. When Obon ends, the spirits of the dead are sent off back to their world. In some regions, this farewell involves releasing floating lanterns at the sea or a river, so as to light the spirit's way. The most prominent holiday intended simply for people to relax comes at the end of April and beginning of May. Business booms for hotels and resorts during this break earning it the nickname Golden Week. It's really just four public holidays close together, but in some years that can mean nearly a solid week off. It's the perfect time of year for outdoor fun. Not too cold, not too hot. Many people flock to the seaside or the mountains. The Japanese tend to take holidays at the same times, around the New Year, Obon, and Golden Week. During these periods, the Japanese transportation network is severely congested. Everywhere you go, you'll find crowds of people, often making these holidays anything but restful. This is the domestic departures area at Haneda Airport, and thankfully it's a lot less congested than what you've just seen in the video. This is a typical weekday scene here, and these are the baggage inspection areas that people go through to catch their flights. Haneda handles more domestic flights than any other Japanese airport, and generally speaking, it's the gateway for everybody going off to their favorite leisure destinations. And according to the Japan Tourism Agency, these are the top five holiday destinations. Number one, Hokkaido. Well, I personally go there fairly often because my wife comes from there, but it also has some of the best seafood that Japan has to offer. Number two, Chiba. 
right next to Tokyo? A little surprising, perhaps, but I think some of that popularity at least is due to a certain rodent and the theme park that he inhabits. And number three, Okinawa, well, tropical resort, say no more. Let's take a look at the reasons for the popularity of all these destinations and how the Japanese like to spend their holidays. For the Japanese, the most popular travel destination is Hokkaido. Each year, more than 15 million visitors spend at least one night there. At the far north of the Japanese archipelago, Hokkaido has average summer temperatures around 20 degrees Celsius, as well as generally low humidity, making it a perfect escape from the sweltering summers further south. But Hokkaido's charms are not limited to summertime. In winter, deep powder snow covers the mountains, drawing legions of skiers and snowboarders. And each February, the city of Sapporo holds a snow festival, featuring 250 large snow and ice sculptures in its public parks. Lit up at night, these works of frozen art delight spectators with their magical glow. Japan's third most popular domestic holiday destination, Okinawa, is at the opposite end of Japan in the extreme south. With its subtropical climate, bathing in the sea is possible as early as March. It takes under three hours to fly from Tokyo to Okinawa's seemingly endless summer. In Okinawa, visitors can enjoy natural wonders like colorful coral reefs and subtropical fish. Another element of Okinawa's appeal is an exotic traditional culture, quite distinct from that of Japan's main islands. In Shizuoka, Nagano, all over Japan in fact, hot spring resorts are popular holiday destinations. There are 22,000 hot spring facilities nationwide. Take a soak in a huge bath and your fatigue just slips away. A major element of any holiday trip in Japan is eating the local cuisine. Food lovers travel the length and breadth of the country to sample in-season delicacies at the peak of freshness and flavor. Just the chance to eat something delicious can make the journey worthwhile. And the local sake is a bonus. One major purpose of travel in Japan is visiting Shinto shrines and Buddhist temples. There are 160,000 of them nationwide, each known for receiving certain kinds of prayers. Pilgrims journey far and wide in search of particular divine favors. Another major draw is Japan's scenic wonders. Japanese tourists go to great lengths to capture perfect moments in their memories, and on their cameras. Japan is blessed with an abundance of natural beauty and traditional culture. There are countless appealing holiday destinations. But until now, the Japanese have tended to prefer quick holidays. In contrast, this website promotes a rather different way to spend a holiday. Staying on a farm and helping with the chores in exchange for room and board. Naoko Hosokawa and her son Rin live in an urban area of Aichi Prefecture. Using the website they arranged to stay on a family farm in Gifu Prefecture. The Hosokawas will stay five nights here. Hi, I'm Naoko Hosokawa. Nice to meet you. The father of the family hosting them is Masanori Morimoto. On this farm, guests stay for free in exchange for six hours of daily labor on the farm.
Today, the Hosokawa's first task is to pick ume plums. For Rin, who lives in a flat, plucking fruit off a branch is not something he gets to do in everyday life. The next job is to feed the pig. Rin watches his mother go first. He then summons up the nerve to try as well. After doing all their chores, the Hosokawas have dinner with the Morimotos. Rin is not used to eating with such a large group. All the ingredients in these mouth-watering dishes are fresh from the Morimoto farm. Isn't it good? They have to heat the bath water themselves. Feeding the boiler with firewood is a new experience. I don't know the trick to it, so it takes a lot of effort. It's harder than I thought. Rin becomes fast friends with Yuta, the Morimoto's eldest boy. It's moving! Did it start out really small? The five days fly by and their holiday is over. The Hosokawa's trip is an example of the slow-paced and low-cost holidays that are now starting to attract interest in Japan. There's definitely a kind of an appeal to that sort of holiday, although I suspect I'd be totally useless. Nevertheless, it is a great way to get away from the daily grind, and I expect there's a lot of people in Japan who are deeply in need of that. I'm in a major travel agent's now, and over here you'll see there's tons and tons of pamphlets and brochures on different kinds of holidays, and the travel industry comes up with countless new ones every year to keep up with customer demand. I'm going to talk to one of the agents here and see if I can get some more information about recent trends. Fujimura-san, nice to meet you. Konnichiwa. Are there any recent trends that stand out? In response to the tragic disaster in the Tohoku region this year, our company is trying to give a helping hand by using pamphlets like the ones you see here to promote Tohoku's excellent attractions, like hot spring resorts and excellent food. A great many customers have booked. It's often said that the Japanese preference for holidays is cheap, close and short. Is that still the case? The mantra cheap, close and short has been around for a few years. But this summer we saw more customers booking longer stays, five or six nights, in places like Okinawa and Hokkaido. So you say a long stay but that's five, six days? Japanese people have usually taken holidays of two or three nights on average. Six nights or a week is long by Japan's standards. So for domestic holidays, people are on average taking trips of two to three days, sometimes five to six. Are there any people that come in here and ask for longer trips than that? This year, the greater Tokyo metropolitan area experienced electricity shortages for the first time. And so we launched our first ever Beat the Heat packages, one month in a cooler location. We were targeting families during children's summer school holidays. Japanese children are given homework projects over the summer, so we devised ways to help them. People were buying these holiday packages. That's something new this year. And do you think that's a trend that will continue? This year we've seen a positive development, a movement towards longer holidays, and we will continue to offer longer packages as we strive to stay in tune with customer needs. OK, 
Okay, let's move on now and take a look at the history of holiday making in Japan. Japanese people are hard workers. Until the late 19th century, there was not even a customary day of rest during the week. People worked every day of the year, save for a few holidays like Obong and New Year's Day. There was only one exception, religious pilgrimages. Issei Jingu is a Shinto shrine that is home to the deities of the sun and agriculture. It attracted worshippers from all levels of society. For the common people, a journey to Issei from the capital Edo took two to three months. It was a once-in-a-lifetime holiday. In the late 19th century, Sunday was set as the weekly day off. At that time, Japan was opening itself to the West, and Western-style resort hotels were built, although the people who stayed there were mainly foreigners. Nineteen forty-seven, not long after the end of the Second World War, a set of paid holidays in addition to the weekly day off was instituted. In the 1960s, Japan's post-war recovery blossomed into an economic boom, and more people gained the means to indulge in leisure activities in their free time. Tourist destinations began to thrive, and leisure facilities mushroomed. The Joban coal mine in Fukushima Prefecture made a bold decision to give up its declining coal business and focus on developing a tourism industry centered on hot spring resorts. It was a success. Many holidaymakers from Tokyo began traveling there. This television program from 1961 cast a cynical eye on the advent of mass leisure. We can no longer dismiss the boom in leisure as a mirage conjured by corporate capital and the mass media. These days, the working man's leisure time is considered to be of the same importance as his work. In the 1970s, company trips became popular. This trend blurred the line between workplace relationships and time off. In the 1980s, Japan's booming manufacturing industry started to cause international trade friction. In response to criticism that the Japanese worked too hard, the number of paid holidays was increased to 10 days per year. Then, in the mid-80s, came the bubble economy. A two-day weekend, with both Saturday and Sunday off, became more common. Now, the average number of paid days off per year has risen to 18, but people still don't use most of them. What's the longest holiday you've ever taken? Hmm, three days, two nights, when we went to Hokkaido, I think. That was the longest? I can't get anyone to cover for me at work. How do you feel about the way he takes time off? I'm used to it. Three days and two nights is about the limit. It's hard to take more than that. I guess five days at most, but it's not easy. Why is that? Other people aren't using all their holidays, so if I was the only one doing it, I'd worry about how it would look, what other people would think. Experts say that if Japanese workers used all their paid days off, as Western workers usually do, it would boost the tourism industry and expand domestic demand. The Japan Tourism Agency calculates the potential economic effect at 15.65 trillion yen. Take more holidays to boost the economy. That's the new pitch from the Japanese government. 
Back in the days when I was an office worker, I can remember that a lot of people in the office were unwilling to take holidays for fear of being seen as disloyal or something. I, for one, certainly didn't share their compunction, though. That was over 30 years ago, but even now Japanese people tend not to take off much time. One government study said that the average Japanese worker takes off only eight and a half days a year, although they're entitled to more than twice that. The reason they give for that is, for example, some people are saving up days off in case they get ill or an emergency comes up. Other people just don't want to be inconveniencing their co-workers. But there are actually some companies who encourage their workers to take time off. Let's look at how they do it. This is an electrical components manufacturer in Gifu Prefecture. It has an 80% share of the Japanese market for its main product, switch boxes. And this company is known for giving more holidays than any other in Japan. One hundred and forty days per year the company is closed. All employees have the day off. I was almost embarrassed because I had more days off work than my kids had out of school. <laughs> the key is special shipping forecast software. Using their programming and accounting know-how, the employees developed it themselves. The forecasts are almost 100% accurate. The company can determine in advance exactly what quantities of products will be needed during the days off. The factory's production and shipping plan is based on the software's forecasts, and everything is always done efficiently and in advance. And the employees savour the holidays they can take as a result. Takahiro Tsuji, who works in shipping, pursues photography. This shot of Japanese cranes was the reward for seven days of patient waiting in the snows of Hokkaido. Yosuke Kunieda from the sales planning department is fond of fishing. During his spring holiday he landed a giant 54 cm black bass. It was a dream come true for him. This company not only gives lots of vacation, but the wages it pays are also far above average. Motivated employees have the focus they need to raise operational efficiency. The company's founder believes that long holidays are the reason for that motivation. He calls holidays a psychological bonus. People might think we're churning out slackers, but Japanese employees will always give you an honest day's work. Now, one company is not only giving time off, but extra money to help workers enjoy their holidays. I just came back from my anniversary holiday. It's called the anniversary holiday system. Workers decide on an anniversary, such as a birthday or wedding anniversary. They then receive 100,000 yen when they request four or more days off around that anniversary. Adopting this system has raised this company's holiday benefit usage to 90%. It's great to have four days off and to have 100,000 yen on top of that. It's not just the 100,000 yen that makes it easier to take holidays. When a worker is away, colleagues will pick up his or her workload to ensure that business continues as usual. Everyone is on the same page and knows how it works. All of a worker's responsibilities are tracked on a visual progress report and the information is shared among co-workers. The key to a worker being willing to go on holiday is this system of keeping tabs on one another's duties. We're all very conscious of how to share our duties with other people. This has actually made a pretty big impact. 
Or take the case of this pharmaceutical company. In 2006, they introduced a unique system to address the problem of employees failing to take their allotted days off. They extended the validity period for paid days off so that rather than losing them, employees could take them later. The idea came from the staff and now employees can accumulate up to 50 paid days off. Takuro Saito in Human Resources couldn't wait for the new system to start. He used his accumulated leave to volunteer in Sri Lanka. He worked with local people to provide basic amenities, digging ditches and so on. This was the chance he'd been looking for to discover what life was really like in a developing country. I was able to work alongside the people there and see things from their viewpoint. It changed my outlook, my whole way of thinking. It was great. A long stint as a volunteer. Time spent caring for a family member. The new system allows people to take time off when they need it the most, at pivotal moments in life. It can be done. Workers can have their holidays if they really try. And as the Japanese take a fresh look at how to get work done, perhaps they will find ways to enjoy more leisure time and the economy will reap the benefits. It's quite amazing the lengths that some companies will go to just to get their employees to take some time off. Really, the only obstacle now to Japanese people enjoying vacations in the same way that Europeans do is the inability to break with old habits. Although having said that, the last time I took off a month for a holiday is probably too long ago for me to remember. Thanks to this program, I do get to visit quite a lot of places in Japan that I otherwise wouldn't get to. But they do tend to be mainly day trips. Who knows where we're going next week, but please do join us for the ride. I'll see you again next time. With its striking colour, the Red Sea Bream has long been associated with good luck in Japan. We examine why the Japanese like the Red Sea Bream so much and how they traditionally catch it.